the fly half situation. Can you just talk us through what you like with um, Ben Donaldson and Carter Gordon and particularly, I guess, what Noah and uh, James O'Connor have to do to push their selection over this second half of the super season? Well, I'm, I'm not going to speak about players that are selected for the squad. I'm going to speak about players that are selected for the squad. Um, well, Carter Gordon, I think, has been very impressive in his his work ethic, uh, his ability to take the ball to the line, his ability to mix his game up and his defensive tenacity. Uh, Donaldson, I was impressed by at the end of uh, the November series when he came on and played for Australia and obviously hasn't had that much time at 10, but we'd like to have a look at him in camp. I guess Max, um, youngest in the squad, what have you liked about his first five games, the Waratahs, and how he's taken on Super Rugby? Well, he's got pace, mate. You know, big thing about Test Rugby is having pace, particularly in the back three. He's got pace. He's got a great instinctiveness about him. He's got courage. Um, yeah, he's got all the attributes of being a very good test player and uh, he's made a good start and he's, his challenge now is to, is to keep improving. Hi, Ethan. Sorry, I was just going to ask, how, how much of this squad was to do with having a look at them right now um, and finding that balance between um, guys you just want to have a look, an extra look at or... Um, really thinking that they're totally in your World Cup plans? So well, everyone who's selected is in the World Cup plans, mate, I can assure you. Yeah, Australia's got a, a talented group of players, but a small group of players. And so, you yeah, know, there's 33 coming to camp. There's probably five or six overseas that come into contention. And there's another five or six players, yeah, you know, can knock at the door. Um, so they're all in contention. Um, but we've decided only to select 33 and the players who aren't selected you know, have numerous opportunities over the next six or seven weeks in Super Rugby to, to press their claims. So these 33 guys have the, have the first opportunity to impress. I understand you, you liked what you saw from, say, Ben Donaldson on last, last year, but his form, I don't think too many would would say that his form has been great this year. So when you look at the balance between that, um, how do you, how does someone like a Ben Donaldson make a squad like this? Uh, well, I think I answered that question before. I like what I saw at the end of the season. Yeah, he's only played a couple of games at, at 10 and we'd like to see what he's capable of doing. Eddie, can I ask about the back three, please? There's some players in there that have, uh, played variously at wing and at fullback. Do you have a strong sense of, of who might, uh, how that's going to fall and who might end up at fullback, or are you still sort of waiting to see about that? Well, Jeff, uh, our first test is on the 8th of July. Uh, today, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is the 2nd of April. 1st of April, uh, Volandes is going to be the Australian chairman. So We've got past the 1st of April. Um, so it's a long way away from final test or, or the first test selection. So at the moment, what we've done is select a, a group of players uh, with the ability, of, you know, hopefully to play a number of positions. Going to the World Cup with 33 players, one of the most important things, particularly with the backs, is being able to play multiple positions, uh, particularly in the back three. Um, so... Uh, yeah, to answer your question, I don't really have a strong idea at the moment. Um, but over the next three months, we'll get a pretty clear picture of where we need to go. Any, uh, Josh Fluke, one of the uncapped players uh, named in the squad. Um, what have you liked about him and his play for Queensland so far this year? Had you noticed anything or seen any of him before this Super Rugby season? Yeah, no, I first saw him up at Narrabri. Um and I was impressed by his feel for the game. You know, I think um, one of the things I learned from Bob DeWire is always try to pick players that have got the things you, you can't catch. And one of the things you can't catch is the feel of the game. And, you know, just looking at the try he scored, uh, was it last weekend? Uh, when he came from the opposite side of the scrum, took an inside pass from O'Connor. Um, yeah, that ability to read the game, that instinctiveness about the game, 
you know, he's he seems like he's got a good head on him, good character, good hard working player. Um, so a lot of things to like about him, mate. I've I've read previously you talk about Suli and what you like about um, Suli Vunivalu, um, but you also say that you know players select themselves. Um, I think it's generally considered that his form has been underwhelming so far this year. And he looks, when I watch him at training and watching him at games up here in Queensland, he looks like he's struggling a bit mentally, like his confidence in himself. So what are you, what are you seeing in him that um, gives you a positive uh, vibes, not the right word, but that type of thing about Suliasi? Well, contradiction is a big part of selection, mate. You know, um, you're always trying to find players you feel can be world-class. Yeah, that's that's the ultimate task is to find players who can be world class. And I've seen Vinavalu play for Melbourne Storm. I've seen him play in the RL. I've seen bits and pieces of his his play for Australia A, and bits and pieces of what he's done for Queensland. There's a lot of gaps in his game at the moment, but our job as coaches is to help help him fill the gaps. So if you got a cattle prod up there, train and get it out, mate. Might help him. Uh, uh, Eddie, you obviously uh, look all around the world and you've got your overseas-based players. They're going to be uh, zooming in on this. Um, uh, Richie Arnold, he's done some really good things for Start to Lose. But what have you seen in his his game uh, that, that makes uh, him a, uh, a really strong contender and strong candidate here? Yeah, he's a massively tough player, mate. You know, Start, start uh, to Lose... Uh, Jim build their pack around Richie Arnold. Um, yeah, you know, I went and met the the coach of uh, Toulouse, uh, Ugo Monya, and we had a chat about him and and what he brings to their team and his development as a player. Yeah, you know, he's a very young player. You know, when I say that, he's very young by playing experience and training experience. So I feel like again, he's one of those players that's got a lot of development in, a lot of growth in him. Mm-hmm. Um, Caden Neville's had a really good season um, and it's, it's unfortunate you've got sort of Isaac Ryder and Matt Thorpe sort of uh, on the chronic in, injured list is it uh, those lock options are super important yeah no well, you know big men are always important mate um, but uh, yeah as you said Neville's been yeah, very tough, very combative for the Brumbies and it's one of the reasons why the Brumbies are doing so well. So he's, he's put a, a stake in the ground and it's up. there's other opportunities for other locks to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, in the back row, uh, Brad Wilkin, um, with, with England you made some strong choices with guys like Underhill and Curry coming into back row to, do, to be very uh, abrasive, very... Uh, combative, hard on the ball. What, what do you see in Brad Wilkin that you've really liked? Uh, very strong defensive player. Um, reasonable over the ball. Um, and again, he's one of those players I feel like he's got a lot of growth in. Yeah, he hasn't been hasn't been through the golden golden pathway. So he's had to battle a fair bit. He's a country lad from uh, Wellington, New South Wales. And I just, again, he's one of those ones I feel like we can get a bit more out of. Is there any hint there that um, you always have to look at different ways to play that key position at number seven? Uh, well, you always want someone hard on the ball, mate. Yeah, you know, a seven's job you know, has been since the game first started to now um, is on first phase, when you've got the ball, you've got to make sure you get that first ruck, quick ruck, and that's a seven's role. And then conversely, on the opposition's ball, that first ruck, he's got to make it tough for the opposition to get quick ball. And, you know, so we've got a, we've got a number of good players in that area in Australia. You know, we've got uh, Wilkin, obviously, who has played 100-odd tests and, uh, you know, really pleased how he's game developing uh, each game in Super Rugby. And McGrath's, a, again, a player of good promise uh, with Queensland. And so to have those three really good options there, um, is 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 very uh, positive for us. Thank you, Eddie Blake. Shot. What have you seen from him at the Brumbies that you've liked so far this year? 
Uh, well, what I like about him, mate, he's, again, one of those players I feel like he's got a lot of growth in. Yeah, he's an unheralded player, built, you know, he's pretty close to the ground. Um, you know, if he's standing behind a picket fence, you're not going to see much of him. Um, you know, and he's built like a, a, a brick shit house, isn't he? Like, so he's, 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 he's perfectly built to be a prop. He scrummages hard. He's hard on the ball. Um, and again, one of those guys, he's come up the hard way, feel like with an opportunity, we may get a bit more out of him. Eddie, you've got that list of seven overseas-based players. I think you'd sort of said that you would assess where things sit before kind of um, making any sort of decision whether you'd lobby for more Gitto Law picks than three. Um, does that indicate that, that you would look for more than three, that you might ask for more than three from the board, or, or is it just a list of seven? Well, we won't have to make that decision until we make the World Cup squad. So uh, there are discussions going on about that. But certainly, you know, if you look at that, that list of players that are going to join by Zoom, they're pretty talented players. Um, but again, talent isn't everything. They've got to be prepared to work hard and commit themselves to Australia. And then, and, and in some cases, that may affect their, their contracts overseas. So, you know, there's some, there's some work to be done in that area, finding out who the right players are, what level of commitment they've got, how hard they're prepared to work. Um, but they've certainly got talent there. Um, and the discussion with Rugby Australia will be ongoing. Um, but again, we don't need to make a final decision until we make the final decision on the World Cup squad, which is, I would imagine, in some time in, in mid-August. And you, you mentioned earlier, sorry, just following on with Richie being selected, but Rory obviously not on that list. Is that uh, just um, continuation of your thoughts about Rory not um, deciding to come back and play in Australia during this break he's got? Well, I think he's working on the factory line at Hino, isn't he? I think he's making those trucks because um, he's not playing rugby at the moment. So, yeah, you know, to get selected, you have to play rugby. You have to play rugby. You know, we don't pick blokes who make Hino trucks. Eddie, uh, you did uh, go and talk to Hugo Mola. Uh, what about Emmanuel Merfou? Did you try to convince him to come back to Australia because I know he wants, he's waiting for his French passport, but was there an opportunity to get, to get him back? Uh, look, he's, he's a nice, good young boy from the uh, Western suburb of Sydney. He's decided he wants to play for France. Yeah. I had a bit of a discussion with him. Um, I only want players who want to play for Australia. And if he's made a decision to play for France, which he has, then, you know, I, I wished him all the best. And I hope he has a great career. Um, and do I wish he, he selected Australia? Not really, because I can't control that. Um, so, yeah, there's not much of a story there for you, mate. Eddie, is um, someone like um, Carter Gordon in the squad for experience, you know, to get a taste of being in the Wallabies training squad? Or is he actually an option for the World Cup, given that you've only got a short amount of time, you've only got three tests? Yeah, Mel, as I said, all these 33 players are, are strongly in World Cup selection as the six guys on, on Zoom and there's another, you know, anywhere from six to ten players that are going to be knocking on the door. Um, and all of those players don't go in the 33. Um, now last time I taught Mass, uh, 49 players doesn't go in the 33. So there's going to be hot competition and all the players who who come to the first camp, you know, they get to put their tyres on, they get to pump it up, they get to see how fast they can go. Um, and if he, if he, if he, you know, wins the, the time trial, then, then he'll go to the next stage. If he doesn't, if he can't get out of the blocks, then he might stay in the blocks. What have you liked about what you've seen from him this season? Oh, I love his competitiveness. And he's also got... He's got that feel, as I was speaking about before, he's got that feel of the game of when to flatten up and when to be a little bit deeper, uh, which is a bit of a lost art. Um, and he's, he's instinctively got that. Um, he's courageous. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed his game yesterday. You know, his side got absolutely pumped in the first half. 
Yeah, at one stage you thought you were going to see the rebels floating out on the Pacific Ocean. They were getting that pump. But he hung in there, he missed a couple of tackles, hung in there, kept doing the simple things well, put himself put himself on show. And yeah, they're the sort of players we like to see that they they're never beat. He was never he never thought his side was beaten. He just kept going and going. And you know, ultimately that's the side we want to produce for Australia. That's the side people want to see. That are always fighting, always in the fight, always never get beaten. And to do that, we need players who want to do that. And he's certainly got plenty, loads of that at the moment. Do you see a little bit of um, Stephen Larkham in him? Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> apart from apart from being skinny and tall. <laughs> Eddie, there's obviously no rush to name a captain, but what sort of attributes are you going to be looking for? Um, you obviously get your first chance to, to be in front of the players for a few days. Yeah, well, I reckon we'll need probably seven captains, mate, with HIA. So, you know, you can write, all write down your seven choices on a slip and send them to, through to me or send them through to Marty and we can have a look what you got. But I think we're going to need a number of captains in all seriousness. Yeah, you know, the way the game is at the moment, we will need to have a number of captains. So I'm just working out what the actual structure will be, what will best suit the team um, for the World Cup. Uh, firstly for the rugby championship and then obviously as a as an entree into the World Cup. But we've got a number of good candidates. We've done you know, some really good work with uh, the leadership group that was left by Dave, uh, who's who did a good job with them. Um, and we've been continuing on with that group and, and certainly their commitment to, to be a world-class leadership group is there. Um, and then we'll just work out um, who, who has the title of captain um, and how many captains we have. And are you able just to um, explain your selection process? I assume you're the, the head honcho when it comes to, to picking the squad, but have you got a formal selection panel in place now? No. So it's pretty easy, mate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I've got a number of people I'm taking advice from. Um, you know, some of the most learned people in Australian rugby I've been using their their eyes and their their wisdom uh, to help support views that I may or may not have. Um, you know, and their their private discussions we have with a, a number of people that I've either played with or coached with or or been coached by um, to help me form the opinion. So it's not a one man dictatorship. And you don't probably often. Um have the the choice to select an 18 year old in a in a wallaby squad but there some people are kind of cautioning against rushing max jorgensen um have you been happy enough seeing him in super rugby that he's robust enough to play test rugby if that's if that's where it ended up well again i'll borrow an expression from from bob dwyer i don't i don't think it's ever about age it's about whether they're good enough and whether they're good enough is whether they're tough enough and whether they're robust enough to handle it. Um, and what I've seen so far is the answer to, to that for Max is yes. Um, but again, we've got an opportunity you know, to, to, to test, test drive him around the, around the, the circuit uh, at the Sanctuary Cove and see if he's got the, the qualities to play test rugby. But certainly at the moment, uh, the answer to that is yes, mate. Hey, Eddie. Um... So guys like uh, Tate and Noah, I know you said you won't talk about why they left out, but will you be going to them directly and having conversations with those guys or does it just kind of get left there or do you go to all those people who have played before for the Wallabies recently and kind of counsel them on what, what they need to do? Yeah, well, I haven't spoken to everyone, mate, uh, but I've spoken to uh, maybe 15 people, 15 players this morning at least. Um, gave them an indication of what we feel they need to do um, over the next period of time to bang on the door. You know, they've got to bang on It's their responsibility to bang on the door. Um, Have you liked what you've heard from them in response? Well, players always tell you what you want to hear, mate. Um, it's, not, it's not what I hear, it's what I see. You know, the, the evidence is always performance. You know, and, and you just have a look at our super rugby sides, mate. You know, we're not we're not travelling that well in the table. I just had a look like four of the bottom five spots are filled by our, our players. 
And again, you know, if our players perform at a higher level, those performances will improve. And so there's a there's a there's a, a easy easily message there: perform at a higher level, and you'll get selected. If you don't perform at a higher level, you won't get selected. I'm um, just one more for me. You people are calling you Eddie everywhere at the moment. You've got your own podcast. You're doing luncheons. You're out there, out and about, and we really appreciate you know, the time you're putting in here. Are you enjoying this? Is this a process? That, are you loving being back in, in the, the brunt of this? Well, I've been eating nowhere since Tuesday, mate. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've been sat in this room. I've been playing nurse, uh, which I'm not very good at. Uh, so, so, yeah. Uh, look, there's a responsibility to get rugby, get some enthusiasm going for rugby. Yeah. And and part of, part of coming back to Australia was was that responsibility that was part of the job you know went to friday went up the hunter valley up to the newcastle workers club and they had 550 people there for lunch you know campo was there um and if you can help support those sort of things um you know and, and try to get people's enthusiasm for rugby back going then then it's it's worth doing um yeah, I've got plenty on the table. Plenty on the table to do, mate. You know, selecting it, selecting the team is the most important job, and and you know, attending the games, attending training sessions, going to meet the players is number one priority. And then, and then, what I can do to to get that enthusiasm for rugby going, I, I try to do my bit, mate. Thank you. Eddie, you touched on that super form, um, and particularly against the Kiwis. It's been quite noticeable. What has to change for the Australian side to, you know, turn those results from close, close losses to wins against your likes of the Crusaders and chasing these type of teams? Yeah, well, that, that's yeah. You know, I was speaking in the in the generality. My role is not to to uh, to give advice on how our Australian Super Rugby side should play against the New Zealand sides. Yeah, you know, I'm only interested in, in the players' performance, um, and we want we want players who who are able to draw a line in the sand and, and beat their opponents. You know, it's the old thing if if you're if you're two boxers and the last last time you you, you fought the boxer, yeah, you, know, you you got a you got a points decision on him, then you've got you've got some sort of advantage, psychological advantage as you go into the game. And it's the same with our players. Like every time they play against the New Zealand team, it's about them drawing a line in the sand and saying, right, we're coming to get you. Because for too long, you know, New Zealand's coming, been coming to get us in, in Super Rugby and the Bledisloe Cup. There's been 22 years where we haven't won them. It's a two-horse race, you know. Uh, the odds aren't right. Aren't right. Um, so we've got, to, we've got to address that. And we know it's, we know it's difficult. We know it's not easy. We know it's bloody hard, but we've got to start thinking. It's got to start thinking, working hard enough and working smart enough to put ourselves in a position where we can turn that around. Yeah, and the Blues Oak Cups are the third game we play. So we've got South Africa, Pretoria, which is occupying most of our thoughts at the moment, and then we've got basically no training before we take on Argentina, and then we've got the Blues Oak Cup. Um, but we want players who are, who are really up for that challenge because, you know, to do that, they're going to have to sacrifice things and give up things and work harder than they've ever worked in their life. Because we keep doing what we've been doing, what's the definition of insanity? You keep doing what you're doing, expect different results, then, then you are insane. So we've got to do things differently. Um, our approach to the way we play rugby has got to be different. Our approach to the way we train has got to be different. And, you know, so selection, uh, I think, you know, this squad indicates there'll be some different players involved. Um, Jordan, your lease is back. He clearly featured in the last World Cup. What do you like about him? And just whilst I've got you, um, two halfbacks I noticed as well. Um, was that a considered, how considered was that about just the two? Jordan, the lease, he was a big, ugly bloke, mate. That's what I like about him. He looks a bit like a... And Malcolm Marks, big, tall, strong, uh, gets hard over the ball, carries hard, got a bit of work to do on his throwing. You know, last time he was with the Wallabies, he got in a bit of strike, um, which one of the reasons he hasn't been featured for a while. So we're going to give him the opportunity to show he's grown up a bit um, and wants to work hard. 
character. Certainly, he's got all the attributes of being a top class hooker. In terms, don't read anything to having two halfbacks. We've got two training sessions of 45 minutes. Yeah, so I want the halfbacks to train. And if we've got three halfbacks, then, then it means that they only do uh, what's two divided by three, two, two thirds of the session. I want them to do the whole session. I want to have a look at them. Last couple, please, guys. Um, Eddie, you had Tom Liner down there as as one of the players that wasn't considered due to injury. Would do you think he would have come into calculations at all? Oh, we don't deal with the hypothetical. Um, yeah, you know, he's a good young player. He's a good young player, but unfortunately, because of the concussion, it'll be it'll be doubtful whether he'll be fit for camp. Um, and you know, we'll just let, allow him the time to train with his club and get himself fit. And then if he gets fit and keeps playing well, then we'll have a look at him again. Yeah, and a couple of those overseas guys that have just got TBC beside them, is that just a sort of logistical procedural thing? or uh, A bit, lo- bit logistical and a bit we need to speak to them about their commitments. Um, you know, unfortunately, I was supposed to go up to Japan now um, to speak to those players because all of these players who are playing overseas you know, I need to sit down with them one on one and 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 have a chat to them about their commitment to to playing for Australia. Um, so I haven't had the opportunity to do that with those guys. Um, Quaid, I was lucky enough to catch up with in um, in Brisbane before he left. So we'll get around to that, and then then uh, that TBC will disappear. I guess Samu in particular is one that had the opportunity to maybe come back to Australia and. And didn't was that a little bit disappointing to see? Uh, no, 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 I never. Ne- I think Sonny Bill Williams made a great comment about about you know players' responsibilities to their family about you know Australian rugby or rugby Australia signing Sui Ali. Yeah, you, know, you you can't put yourselves in the position of those young players. Yeah, you know, the responsibilities they have, and in and some families the responsibilities for an extended family. So. So we, but we need to sit down with Samu and work out, you know, what his responsibilities are to his club and, and what his commitment is to Australia. And once we've done that and we can sort that out, then we'll have a decision. Eddie, just on Joseph Suali, we haven't heard from you since uh, he's decided to change codes in a couple of years. What's your reaction as Wallabies coach? Well, he's probably going to be someone else's player, mate. By 2025, if we haven't won the Bledsoe Cup and haven't won the World Cup, you'll be talking to someone else, mate. It's exciting for the game, though. Rugby Union's it's finally got one of their own back. Oh, it's fantastic, mate. Look, I really admire what Hamish McClellan's done, you know, and Andy Marinos as the CEO and the chairman. They've been aggressive. Yeah, you know, what what have we bought? I heard someone talk about this morning. We've bought some relevance back in the market. Yeah, you know, we're back in. We're back competing as a major sport. Yeah, you know, and, and that's what it's done. People are now talking about rugby. Yeah, so but bought relevance, and we've bought a highly skilled player. Like he's a highly skilled player. 